Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here on your day off. So, <laughs> I imagine there's lots of folks who woke up this morning and said, the children are going to school, I have this day to myself. Oh no, I don't have this day to myself. So thank you so much for being here. I know we'll be joined by some other folks along the way. I'm just going to open this and really thank, uh, first of all, Mary Loray, who worked so really hard on, on putting this together. <laughs> Also, Lily McNair, of course, our wonderful provost. And I'm probably some other people. And Joy Stapleton is not here. He'll be here in a second, maybe. Um, I'm having Pat uh, Fitzpatrick, my secretary, just bring something over in a second. But I just wanted to open and give to you to remind you of something we had worked on before. Uh, but I just wanted to, first of all, thank the faculty and the staff for being here today. Again, we're at an interesting moment in higher education, uh, as we've been talking about for the last several years. And, in my state of the colleges or open conversations that we've had in one form or another. Uh, we're in a moment of, of what we call by the business folks a disruption, right? We know that technology has invaded the sector in significant ways uh, and promises to, uh, in its worst moments, reduce a liberal education from a transformative experience to a transactional experience. Uh, and we know that that's something that's a completely adherent, adherent to who we are and how we work here. Uh, we are a place that has built an elegant model starting in 1998 of, as you know, the Wagner Plan, which had at its heart active learning, collaborative learning, interdisciplinary learning, and experiential learning. We put those pieces together in ways that made sense to the faculty at that time. We've been running with that program. Revisions all along the way as the faculty have taken greater ownership of pieces of it and always new faculty coming in and revising it in elegant, important ways. Uh, I'm always impressed by the fact that the faculty has a determined, and again, once again, effort to make sure that writing standards are, you know, uh, uh, across the board, equal and demanding. Uh, I'm listening to, we'll listen to Carol a little bit. Carol, we have, I believe, four or five courses required in writing to graduate from Wagner, right? The first year program has a writing course. The intermediate has a writing course. They're required to second, take a second course. I hope it's always in English, in literature, right? Because I want to take literature courses. Uh, and then we have uh, a senior requirement, and many departments have their own writing requirement built into it. So many times students will take five writing, writing courses, and, and many of our courses are also speaking intensive as well. They're active learning courses in seminar format. But at this moment, with this disruption in technology, with the incredible financial crisis that affects our sector in terms of affordability and access, questions of equity and diversity, uh, as we look at the communities which we know we support very heavily in this room, uh, communities where in fact we see that we're throwing away a quarter to a third of our children in this society because they can't get through high school uh, and even get to college if might be successful in college. And we've made a commitment, as you know, in civic engagement, part of the Wagner Plan, uh, to address that in ways that we can here locally as well as globally to some degree, but mostly locally around the Port Richmond partnership and other pieces of that. So we find ourselves in this moment when there's a lot of anxiety for faculty and others about what will we look like in 10 years? What will, what will this place be about? What's always impressed me and what I want to thank you for today is this faculty has always risen. In my time here, this is my 18th year, okay? In my 18 years, you've always risen as a faculty and staff to say, okay, what do we need to do next? How do we take this model and tweak it or revise it or reform it in so many important ways? And we're at that kind of turning point again in this sense. Uh, one, I know you're taking up the charge that Lily is leading around general education. What does general education really mean, the non-major piece of the, of, of the requirements? What does it really mean beyond just checking boxes off and saying I have a, a broad education by marching through a lot of disciplines, important as that is? But as Carol may talk about in her talk a bit later, there's a new initiative going on, which is really talking about what do students need to know and what do students need to be able to do when they graduate and then focusing back on the breadth requirement, that we call it distribution, the breadth requirement of, of our undergraduate experience in terms of how we prepare them and looking at what they need to do, what kinds of experiences in and outside the classroom to do that. Now we've got a lot of that going on here. What we're doing is integrating and time down and maybe listening to others and coming up with some new innovative ideas, but this faculty always rises to the occasion and has consistently on building international programs when we didn't have many on building the civic programs when we didn't have anything really in that, in that eight or nine years ago, we've become leaders in that nationally. 
And, and back to the Wacker plan with the learning communities, always as a root cause around active learning, interdisciplinary learning, collaborative learning, and experiential learning. We've always spoke, that's our core. Whatever that curriculum looks like, that's our core. And of course, undergirding all of that is a personal, a, a personal education, a very personalized experience here. In 1935, if I have any heroes left in the world, 1935, the first lay president of Wagner College was uh, Clarence Dow. And remember this, 1928, I just saw the letter yesterday, 1928, the Board of Regents says to Reverend Sutter, we were then a Lutheran college, says to Reverend Sutter, we're approving you as a state of New York to be an institution granting Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. We don't start that until 1929. The first graduating class is 1933. We're 81 years old, okay? Think about it, we are a very youthful college, and we really don't take off until after World War II. Uh, so when we think about that, and in that speech, he says, first of all, we joined something called the Association of American Colleges early on. They're so, we're celebrating AAC, and now you, AAC and you, it was AAC for a long time. They celebrate its 100th year, and we're going to be part of that celebration uh, for an entire year, which is not a celebration. It's, it's a reinvestigation of where we're going in higher ed. Uh, but he says, we have this vision of a liberal arts college to be to producing students who are independent-minded, uh, who have a broad and deep education, and who use that education for social purpose. That, that's the founding, for me, that's the foundation of Wagner College. Staten lays it out in 1935. He also says, nicely, that even we're a Lutheran version of that, but we're not proselytizers. We don't want all of our students to be Lutherans. We want our Jewish students to be the best Jews they can be. 1935, think about this, Father Coughlin, for those who know history. Um, uh, we want our Catholic students to be the best Catholics, our humanists to be the best humanists they can be, and so on and so forth. He had this remarkable vision you know, as those good liberal arts colleges did that were started 100 years earlier, even, even earlier than that, uh, of, of what it means to be a well-educated cosmopolitan citizen. And here we were in 1997, we reinvented ourselves around the Wagner plant, and now we're in 2014. Not as dramatic a reinvention, hopefully, but somehow we have to account for the fact that how do we use technology in a sophisticated way that, first of all, primarily advances learning, and around those core values that I, I laid out, interdisciplinary, collaborative, active, experiential. I think this faculty is more than up to this, and as we look at general education, we begin to think about outcomes and the like. So I have Pat coming over. Maybe I'll She's pass here. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, down here. Yes. I just want to give you one thing, and I'll stop. Hey, Pat. Thank you. I'm going to hand these out. Some of you have seen this before, but I don't think we can start a meeting without the Bible. So let's do this. <laughs> So I'm going to give one to Carol. Carol will appreciate this. The AC in Newport dropped off when they went public. So, I'm handing out a document that we, we talked about a couple of years ago. We started focusing on outcomes, and it was so much conversation around economism, around the notion of first job. College education is worth it. Return on investment, only if you get a first good job. And all this mania that we see in Washington and other places about reducing us, again, to a transaction, to an employment agency. So we produced this document. Actually, this is the admissions version, the communications version of this. But let me just walk you through it for a second, then I'll stop and get on to the sessions, because we have a lot of exciting stuff going on. Um, we said uh, AAC and U for four of the last six years, maybe something close to that anyway has done uh, surveys of large cap and small cap CEOs. What are you looking for in college graduates? And you can see in that left column that it looks like a liberal education. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, if you look at it, it says critical thinking, 82%, complex problem solving analysis, 81%, written and oral communication, the application of knowledge and skills in real world settings, that sounds like us, location, organization, evaluation, information, multiple sources, Good liberal education is about evidence and argument, innovation and creativity, teamwork skills, on all the way down to um, various forms of ethical judgment, civic engagement, and so on and so forth. So that was so that's what employers were looking for. In the prior version, that was kind of an inside ballpark one. We had a second cell which said, "Well, let's look at what a liberal education does." We used AACNU's leap, liberal education in America's progress, long-term commitment to liberal education as a formula or as a, an agenda. 
we said, okay, look at the relationship between what employers are looking for and the basic values of a liberal education. We, we skipped over this in this <coughs> version of it because it seemed Not, not to worry, I brought it along. Good, 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 very good. <laughs> <laughs> the third cell, we said, okay, where does it happen at Wagner? So the third cell was, well, we know we have these things happening in the first year program, in the majors, in the intermediate learning community, in the senior program, so on and so forth. So we began to make the relationship. The, th the next cell was critical. That's our assessment work. We do assessment, as we all know, in our departments, in our general education program, and the like. And we said, okay, here's the evidence that we think we're doing a good part of this. How well we're doing it, we're always reviewing what we know. It's part of what we do in assessment as good educators is kind of figuring out, are we doing it well? But we know we have evidence to suggest we're doing it. And then the fourth, the last step should be, how do we tell, first of all, our own students what the map is? What does the map of roadway look like? What are we trying to achieve here in terms of, of, of liberal arts and the integration with professional studies uh, and civic engagement and experiential learning? How are, we, how are we doing that? And what's the road map? And then, of course, how are we telling the outside world? And so we, the folks in communications put this on, and, they put some of the data on the back. This is actually all on the website. The goal is eventually you'll push on these pictures and up will come the testimony and uh, pieces of evidence and interviews and the like to make it much more interactive. Exciting. So I think this is important because as we, as we move into what this day today, uh, I look around and I see so much communication, so much excitement about what you're doing. Uh, and I think that's what we're really celebrating today is your creativity. This is what's come from the bottom up in terms of things you want to show your colleagues that you're doing. But the larger piece is to graft from this back to this larger <coughs> set of problematics that we have to deal with. How do we deal with increasing student learning, even within the base model? How do we integrate technology in a way that makes sense to us on a campus-based program? Because we are a campus-based program. That's who we are. For 85% of our students are residents, 15% of our students are commuters, not counting the graduate students. Uh, and so our, our larger project is to think about what is the 21st <laughs> century education about? I think at Wagner, all the elements are here, and you'll hear that from Carol in many ways as well. All the elements are here. It's how we sew it again, much like we sewed together the Wagner plan. People think uh, we came down from uh, the mount and handed the Wagner plan and said, here's the template. The Wagner plan was here. It was right here. We just had to sew it together differently. And the story I used to tell in the late 90s when we were putting this together was, and people were kind of excited about it, said, look, my, my, my grandmother was a garment, my, my mother was, were garment workers in New York City in factories. And if the boss came in and they were making house dresses and they were sewing them up and he said, we have to move the evening gowns, they would look on the floor, figure out what, what waste material was down there, picked it up and sewed it in and made an evening gown. Well, that's what the Wagner plan was. It took, the, it took the disciplinary courses and put together in cohort groups, okay? It, it added in experiential learning from a natural, a natural identity of our location. Uh, eventually, we added the international components later on. Eventually, we added the civic components later on, which were our goals at the beginning. Uh, and that, and that it continues to grow and flourish and still a powerful, powerful model of learning for our students. As you know, our students say, three reasons why they come to Wagner. New York City, they say, Wagner plan, 90%, Wagner plan, and they read the material, they don't understand what they mean, learning by doing, real world theory and practice woven together, and they say what, some version of what we call beautiful campus here, which means not just physically beautiful and on the harbor and so on and so forth, but beautiful in the sense that they are a person here, that they are real friendships here amongst themselves and real connections with our faculty. They value that immensely. We just did a gala celebrating our young alumni on, on a Saturday night, and we had interviews, eight interviews with young, young alums who have been out six, seven, eight years, all very accomplished. And the, the, every one of them says, without any prompting at all, it's a community here. I felt, as soon as I walked on the campus, I felt I was, I was important. I was going to become empowered here. This was an important place for me. So I salute again your incredible commitment to innovation and creativity. Uh, I can't say enough about that. You always capture my heart by doing that. And I look for a great day. I'm going to be running around to the different <coughs> events. And now I realize there's a competition going on. You get certain benefits if you go to Jason's. You live longer if you go to Jason's. You're happier if you go to Katia's, and so on and so forth. So we'll be, I'll be looking around. But thank you so much. I think we're heading now to the sessions. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here today, and special thanks to our guest speaker, Dr. Uh, Schneider, for being here. And one note about her, given the wonderful number of turnout, we're going to move her session.
from um, Spiro Center room five, if you'll note, to Spiro Center two. If you can kindly make that adjustment, I would appreciate it. Um, and I know we have excellent concurrent sessions that are taking place, and we're actually right on time. <laughs> so thank you, and I look forward to seeing everybody. You know, around. Great.